All right, we're back at it again. Today we're gonna to be working on exponents. Now, exponents are really easy. I know some of these may be a little bit more difficult for your lower level students, but those who are in middle school and definitely in high school, you are working on these probably about this time in the school year. Let's get into it. The exponent is a function of multiplication. And so the exponent simply tells you how many times you're gonna write down the number that you see. In this case, we see one third. So, one-third, which is a fraction, numerator, denominator, to the fifth power simply means write that down five times. One-third times one-third times one-third times one-third times one-third. Can you see me? Come on up, come on up. Come on up. One-third to the fifth power means take one-third, write it down five times. One, two, three, four, five. And since exponents are a function of multiplication, I'm going to multiply these numbers. That's what the dot in between means. When you're multiplying fractions, you simply multiply straight across. One times one is one times one is one times one is one times one is one. One is in the numerator. Three times three, nine. Nine times three, 27. 27 times three, ba ba ba, 81. 81 times 3, 243. That is your answer. Any questions? I didn't think so. Next problem. Guess what that means? 3 halves. That's the same thing as 1.5, which is the same thing as 1 and a half, which is the same thing as 3 halves, which is the same thing as 3 over 2, which is the same thing as 3 in the numerator, 2 in the denominator. I'm going to take this problem. 3 halves, write it down 4 times, and then I'm going to multiply 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 times 3 over 2. Why am I multiplying 4 times? Because that's what it said, 4 times. Take it, write it down 4 times and multiply. 3, 3, 3, 3, multiplying. That's 9, 27, 81 up top. Oop, that's my numerator. On the bottom, 16. Why? 2 times 2 is 4. Times two is eight, times two is 16. You have to know your timetables, ladies and gentlemen. This is called an improper fraction. Now, because this is high level, I'm not going into all the details, but as I look at this problem, I just look at this. I know 16 goes into 81 five times. I know that, that's my whole number. 16 goes into 81 five times, I'm doing it in my head, see? And so that gives me 80, if I multiply these two numbers, got one left over out of 16. How do I know that's right? Because if I go reverse, 16 times five is 80 every day of the week, plus one is 81 over the 16. That's for your algebra students. I don't expect the youngsters to catch on to that. Negative five over four, five fourths, or if you're fancy and you're really good, that would be one and 25 hundredths or 1.25, negative 1.25, but we're working with fractions, so I'm going to write down minus 5 over 4 times minus 5 over 4. I don't like that 4. That's kind of ugly. Times minus 5 over 4 times minus 5 over 4. Boom, boom. All right. Negative five over four to the fourth power means take negative five over four, write it down four times. One, two, three, four times. Multiply them out. Negative times a negative, I like to get rid of those first, is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So up top, it's going to yield a positive result because a negative times a negative is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive. A positive what? 5 times 5, 25. 25 times 5, 125. 125 times 5, 625. Positive, remember. And then 4 times 4, 16. 16 times 4, 64. And 64 times 4, boop, 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 256. That is improper. Now I can go into details. I know that's going to go in at least two times. I'm going to have some change left over. I'll come back to that. Let's go here. Negative two-fifths to the fifth power. Or you could say negative 
four tenths to the fifth power, or you could say negative 40 hundredths to the fifth power if you convert that to a decimal, but we're not algebra students. You know what I'm talking about. But let's take this, next, write it down five times. That's one, two, three, four, five. Negative two to the fifth, negative two fifths rather, to the fifth, maybe just take negative two fifths, write it down five times, and then multiply. One, two, three, four, five of them. A negative times a negative is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive, and a positive times a negative is a negative. At this point, I know my answer is a negative answer. So I'm going to put it there. Again, a negative times a negative is a positive, a positive times a negative is a negative, a negative times a negative is a positive, and a positive times a negative is a negative. I like to get that out of the way so I make a few mistakes. Two times two, four times two is eight times two is 16 times two, 32. All day long, that's in my numerator. And on the bottom, five times five, 25. 25 times five, 125. 125 times five, is 625, and that's where my skill level dissipates, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm just going to do some simple math right here. 25, 2, 10, 12, 1, 31, 1,000, I'm sorry, 3,125. Let me check my math. 25 carry to 2, that's 10, uh, add to 2 is 12 carry to 1. 30 plus the one is 31, and it's absolutely correct. I may or may not be able to do something with that. I don't really think I can. Uh, I'll come back. Right here, it's a little different. We've got, notice, one third to the fourth and three to the twelfth. So let's see, let's see, let's see how we're going to set this up. So I'm going to write one third times one third times one third times one third. Third. Now here is the part that you have to concentrate on. 3 to the 12th. That is not a fraction, ladies and gentlemen. So this 3 to the 12th is actually up here. 3 to the 12th. And all that's going to be over 1. I think I'm going to run out of room. Oh, I'm back. All right, maybe not, we'll be creative here. So here's your problem. Notice you got threes on the bottom and technically you have all threes on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze this in. So that's gonna equal to, cause I wanna make my math simple. Three, 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 three on the bottom. So that's one third times one third times one third. Come on in cause it's gonna get tight. One third. I just copied these right here, put them right here. Three to the 12th means multiply three 12 times, except you're gonna have one on the bottom. Three to the 12th, technically, any number that's a whole number has a one at the bottom in the denominator. So this is the same thing as three over one, except I gotta do that 12 times. Can I fit it? Three over one times three over one times three over one times three over one times three over one. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Woo! Times three over one. You getting that? Three over one times three over one times three over one. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Times three over one times three over one. I really didn't have to do all that, but I wanted to show you something. So I got all these threes up here. I got these threes on the bottom, but anytime you have the same number on the top and bottom, you can cross them out. So I can cross this one out and that one out, this one out, that one out, because I'm multiplying. I can cross all those out. Those are done. I have to do nothing with those. Same thing with the threes, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top. So that leaves me with this 
as my answer. Blah, 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 is my math right? My math is absolutely right. So three times 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 three. If I multiply all those ones, I'm gonna have a one on the bottom because one times 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 one is one. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, so that's three to the eighth power over one, which is the same thing as three over eight, which is the same thing as three times 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 three. I don't feel like doing that right now. Maybe I'll come back to it. All right, right here. Four to the ninth times one, negative one fourth to the fifth. So negative one fourth times negative one fourth times negative one fourth times negative one fourth. This problem is very similar to that problem. Let's see here how we want to attack it. So technically, this, I'm going to put this over one, is over one because the four here is a whole number. That's not a fraction. This is a fraction, numerator, denominator. This is not. So you can always put these over one. That's what I did over here. I took this, wrote it down five times. No, I didn't. One, two, three, four. I only wrote it down four times. I'm missing one times negative one fourth. Now we're in business. All right, so that is the same thing as, hold up, let's deal with the negatives. A negative times a negative is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive, and a positive times a negative is a negative. And if I go back and multiply that negative times this positive, still, this is a positive, my answer is going to be negative. My answer is going to be negative. Negative times a negative, positive times a negative, negative times a negative, positive times a negative, negative. I take all those negatives, multiply times this positive, and I still have a negative. I know that's a lot. You algebra students, you know what I'm talking about. So, I know my answer is negative. I got four nines up top, ladies and gentlemen. I got one, two, I got nine fours. I got nine fours, that's what I meant to say. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These nine or these nine fours? I can put a whole line up under here, just like that. It's a big fraction. It's going to have a negative sign to it. And on the bottom, I got, because these are going to now multiply. And if I multiply all those fours times all these negative ones, it's just going to flip the signs. I just did that early. That's where I got the negative from. All those negatives make that negative, and all these ones are still one. This is going to be a negative one times this, which is why I got a negative times all of that. Keep up. Four times four times four times four times four, times four which is, I'm going to write it out, four times four times four times four times four. Four, Woo. one, two, three, four, five. Okay, times the one. I mean, I could put it, it doesn't really make a difference because it's all the same. So, let me rewrite this. I can cancel that out, 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 cancel that out. And then the one really doesn't make a difference. So now I got one, two, three, four up top over this one, which I really don't need, but if you want it, here it is, to the fourth power, which is the same thing as four, to the fourth power, which is the same thing as 256, because that's four times four is 16 times four is 64, times four is 256. I almost didn't solve that problem, but there you go. Negative, boom, that's where you always make that mistake. You know where your teacher take off two points? Negative 250.